Now, it's often said that beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, and I suppose when it comes to sounds, beauty lies in the ear of the beherer. Chords that send one listener off into rapture can rape the eardrums of someone sitting next to him. It all depends on how your ear is tuned. Most of us can enjoy the sound of birdsong, but for how many, I wonder, is there a sound so sweet as that of the bleating of sheep? Well, I'm about, I'm about to offer you a chance to find out because my next guest believes that there is indeed music to be heard in the sounds of sheep, so much so that he's even learned to bleat like a sheep. To help us all understand, he's set the whole thing to proper music, and with the help of a few farmyard friends, he's going to let us into his secret. But before I talk to him, let's listen to the sounds that turn him on. Here, with the lost sheep, is Adrian Munsey. Was that other sheep over there trying to tell you something? I mean, it kept sort of interrupting. I think it was trying to upstage me, actually. I'm a bit worried, yes. What was it? Is one sheep very much like another? No, there are many different kinds of sheep noises. The really lost one goes, meh. Then there's a middle one, which goes, meh. And what does, how do you, how you, middle, what do you mean? Middle, not well, quite Well, he's lost. not quite so lost. There's an awfully sad one, which goes, meh. He's, he's in terrible trouble. Is he? Yes, what, this is, one is too. Is it a male or a female one? This, this one's a female, six days old. 
Hey, ble <laughs> hey, bless it. What, where did you, when did you have this sort of vision? You know, were you on a road to somewhere and you thought you had to become interested in involved in sheep? Yes, um, I was travelling. I was in Uppington, which is where St George is meant to have killed the dragon. That's in Wiltshire. That's right. And there was an amphitheatre there, which was full of sheep, and they were all bleating away. And, um, well, some t everybody feels like a lost sheep sometimes, and I think one just felt like bleating. And that's what happened. And... Uh, You've, so nev you've never looked forward since then? No, no, we're going from strength to strength. <laughs> Do they respond to you at all, though? Do they know what you're doing or what you're saying for them? Well, some of them are interested. I mean, obviously, uh, that particular one over there was very interested, perhaps too interested. You um, mean they get physically excited by what you're doing? Do well, we've just done a disco version where they might get uh, <laughs> physically excited. Let's to follow up this one when you've... <laughs> Loopy Lou here is. Uh, is she called? Is, she, is it a she? It's a she. She's yes. called Loopy Lou. Yes. Yeah. Well, when you went to your record company and said, uh, or to any record company and said, I've got, the, I want to stand in front of a microphone and in front of an audience and be bleat. Yes. Did they say that's the door or, or sit down? No, it was it was a wonderful experience. I'd, I, uh, uh, it was extraordinary, really. I'd, uh, I'd had a bit of luck beforehand in a, a, a gallery called the Fisty Samuel Gallery. It offered me an exhibition which starts this right. month, but I went in and said. Um, I don't know what you think of this, but uh, it's sheep with an orchestra. Oh, God. <laughs> and um, within 10 seconds, Arnold of Virgin, bless his heart, suddenly said, Adrian, I'd like you to know, I think this is fantastic. I thought, strike a light, because... Uh, yeah. Anyway... You're then, in. You're in. It, well, I, we ought to point out that you're a highly educated individual, that you, you're in charge of a lot of the destinies of students. Yes, I'm a shepherd of my flock. You are? <laughs> yes. But what, what qualifications do you have? Oh, well, I've got uh, two MAs, ma, 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 uh, ma, ma, one right. from Cambridge, ma, and one from the Royal College of Art, ma. Good. <laughs> and you're putting all this, this fund of knowledge to very good effect. Well, this is the, it's meant to be primitive sounds and funny and sad as well. Right. I wrote it has a haunting sort of w lost, forlorn, wind-like quality, doesn't it? Wind blown, not wind, like wind blown. Yes, we went and recorded the wind down in Dorset. What is a sheep noise for mint sauce? <laughs> well, I... <laughs> We don't like to think of uh, eating pink? lamb. It's a question of sort of eating the leg that feeds you. If, if I eat lamb, that's right. Yes, that's I'm right. off that's lamb right. at the moment. Anyway, I wish you success with your, with your especially with your disco bleating noises. Well. If you have, I ought to point out, uh, thank you very much, Edwin Monson. I ought to point out, if, if you, any of you are watching and, and feel that you can make commercial animal noises and make a big hit with can it. Can you do one, Russell? Would you do it? A do bar? One for, yes. Listen, I live in Yorkshire. <laughs> I'm surrounded by the bloody things. I don't want to see any more of them. <laughs> But if you do, if you can make animal noises, please write to Esther Ranson, care of That's Life, BBC Terror, <laughs> and not to us.